Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, cats, dogs, whatever, welcome to the Trav Torch Show, episode number 11. I am your host, Trav Torch, and before we get started, quick plug, I just dropped a new EP. It's called The Bedroom Soundtrack. It's available on all streaming services and at TravTorch.com. I dropped it on Valentine's Day. Do me a favor, follow me at Trav Torch and uh, send me a message, a comment. Let me know how you like it. Let me know what your favorite song is so I know which video to do next. On today's show, we have a very special guest from the Tough Love LA series. It's on TV One. It's also on YouTube where I prefer to watch it. Miss Camry Cole. <laughs> hey, what's up? How are you? Thank you for coming on. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm doing good. It's nice outside. I'm feeling good, feeling great. Yeah, so before we get started, I have one question. What's up? Are you and your homegirl still upset or are y'all good now? <laughs> uh, no, nah, we still upset. We still, still upset, upset for sure. Tell them why you mad, Craig. We still upset. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's, so. It's a lot going on. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, well, before we start talking about tough love um, and story, why don't you tell us your story? Okay, for sure. So, I'm from Houston, Texas. Hey. H town. Um, I went to yeah. What's up? I went to Howard, which I was thinking about pulling out the crew neck one time for the one time, and then I moved to LA for acting, and that journey was it's a whole story in itself. Um, but I started acting in 2000, the late 2018, early 2019. And, and then uh, shortly after uh, I did a few projects here and there and then, you know, pandemic hit and the pandemic, uh, was its own, uh, (laughs) moment in time for me. Um, I was able to have a lot of time with myself and get to know myself more intrinsically, which I think actually helped my acting because it allowed me to learn to be vulnerable and allowed me to learn to have a better relationship with my emotions, which you need for acting. Um, And so shortly into the pandemic, I did get booked for Tough Love. And the casting story behind that is another story. Um, but I, I, I do want to ask you about that. Um, okay. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to okay, that. Cool. But um, before we get to that, like, how did you get into acting? Like, what, 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 in, what inspired you to be like, I want to act? Um, I think it was honestly just from childhood, me having visions of what my life would be like in the future. And as a child, not being able to understand what those meant and just thinking like, oh, this is just what I see. Uh, I'm just saying things as a child and little did I know, like I was having visions of my life. So just kind of like following my instincts and my heart on that, I dibbled and dabbled in acting in like middle school. And then in college, I did not study acting because I was honestly at that point afraid to be open about my interest in acting. Um, And that just stemmed from, I went to one audition, it was for some Disney show as a kid. And I saw all the people who were there, which it was like probably a hundred. And I was like, oh, everybody wants to do this? Like, why am I special? Like, why should I do it? Mind you, I'm like in middle school. And, you know, growing up, like, I would tell people, oh, yeah, I want to be an actress. And they'd be like, oh, that's a hard, that's really hard. Like, are you sure? But I'm a kid. So I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't, why is it hard? (laughs) And then I went to the audition. I saw those people. And then I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. So what did you study instead of acting? I studied public relations and minor in graphic design. Or I'm sure that definitely helped with what you're doing now. Um, it actually has helped uh, here and there. Um, but I think also it was just good to study PR in general and have that skill um, as well as design. So then once I got to L.A., which I always knew I would move here, I was like, all right, I'm not playing no games with myself or anybody else. Like, I'm doing this. And I've been on that journey ever since. Dope. Oh, so um, tell me about the uh, 
the casting process? Was okay. there a lot of people competing so, for the spots? Right. So, I mean, I can only know my perspective of it and a little bit of the other side to it. But so I actually, um, if you know, Tough Love LA is a spinoff from the original Tough Love that took place in New York. Um, my, a, not, not to cut you off, I've been a big fan of Tough Love since the beginning. Um, I'm uh, friends with uh, Verena Banks, who plays Jordan on the original one. So that's oh, how I found good. out. That's how I found out about the series. But um, go ahead. No, oh, dope, dope. Okay, so um, I have a friend who was a fan of the of the show, and so she was like, "Oh my god, like they're casting for you know something else. Like you should submit for it." And so I did, just like okay, like whatever. Mind you, this was in June of 2020. So we're in pandemic time, like straight quarantine. And they had me audition. They sent me like, hey, send this back within 24 hours, basically. Like typical, how y'all know, audition turnaround time. So I'm like, all right, cool. Since it didn't, thought you mean like a, you mean like a video? A video of you? Yeah, doing? Okay. They sent me sides. Uh, I did the self tape, sent it in. It was like, all right, anyways. Um, and then they gave me a call back and it was like, all right, uh, here are more sides. We want you to do a self tape, send it back to us. Sent it in, thought nothing of it. It was like, all right, whatever. Then they booked me for it. And I was like, oh, okay. And so they're giving me the rundown of everything. And then I look up Tough Love and what it actually was on YouTube. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, it's different when you're doing something that's like on cable or network or film like you don't see the real time fan reactions and comments and how everyone is so engaged um unless you're going to twitter but i was a little overwhelmed like oh my gosh like they have some diehard fans (laughs) and um what i initially booked was for a different a whole different show it was tough love but it was like tough love season four it wasn't tough love la so it was a completely different storyline and then a few months later we um didn't we weren't able to shoot because of the pandemic um spikes happening in la and then ronnie which is one of the creators of the show shout out to her she was like oh yeah we actually scrapped that whole (laughs) the whole series and we're doing something new do you still want to be a part of it and so I was like, yeah, sure. And so I did a chemistry read with Javon, who plays Raymond in the show. And we both were booked. And then the next thing you know, we had a table read. A week and a half, two weeks later, we were shooting. Dope. Yeah. So for, for, for the, the listeners out there that don't know, um, what's, could you just explain the premise of Tough Love? Okay. So Tough Love is a is a show about six um, black young millennials and they're navigating through their dating life, through their personal lives. Um, and it just kind of shows you the, the dynamics between different relationships and, and love, whether that be in friendships or in romantic relationships and even family. Right. And I will say, um, I've watched every single Tough Love season. I've watched Pillow Talk. I watched everything. And I'll say, don't take this the wrong way. This is the one um, season, if you will, where every single character was annoying. But I still love the show. <laughs> Wait, so you thought, you thought Brian was annoying? Was every, <laughs> I, thought, I thought every single was character annoying. was annoying in their own way. Okay. And... uh yeah, just had to put that out there. Okay, okay, that's fair. I mean, everybody was, you know, going through their own things and having their high moments and their low moments. And maybe that's what made it good, that yeah, everybody, everybody was annoying. Yeah, everybody has to have some type of character arc at some point of the show. So, um, we talked about, you play the character story. Mm-hmm. Um What's the difference between story and Camry? What are the similarities and what are some of the differences? <laughs> okay, so off the top of my head, because I was just talking to uh, Javon, uh, the, the whole cast, actually, we were just on FaceTime. And 
story is super turned up, super like, hey, super fun, just like a whole vibe. And Camry is a vibe too, just way more chill. Like, I like to be home. <laughs> I like to chill. I've never dated online or through a dating app also. Um, so, yeah, uh, we have two different levels of turned up. <laughs> Okay. And if you actually had a friend like Maya who was dating a guy like Rashad in real life, what would you what would you tell her or what what would be your advice for her? Oh man. <laughs> Honestly, we would have to have a a long talk about her and her actions, not even like forget Rashad and in the relationship, but it's really like, well, what are, what is he really providing you? What are you missing? What is the void that you think that this man is filling? And we would have a conversation more about her and her feelings and what she needs and is she seeking it in the right way? I mean, she's popping pills and she's pressed. So we would have a conversation about um, her dealing with her emotions and the things that she's going through. So, uh, her brother is a lot. so. I would kind of shift the focus from like, oh, should you be in this relationship to what is really healthy for you in this moment of your life right now? Like, is this helping you grow or is this keeping you in a place of complacency and familiarity? Gotcha. And I guess, you know, I guess that's why um, I found the characters to be a little annoying at, some, at at times because so like Maya 98% of the time you saw Maya on, on camera she was depressed she was upset mm -hmm. you know and 98% of the time you saw uh, Rashad on camera he was making the same face he was like come on Maya I love you Maya come on you know you my girl Maya you know you my girl right <laughs> right so it was you know it was um it it was it, it was it was definitely uh definitely a lot of classic moments in the show. I, I definitely like I definitely like the show. Um but I, I do wish um the and you guys are doing another season, right? Oh, you can't let that out. You can't let the cat out the bag yet. Well, if you guys are doing another season, I would like to see some more character development. I would like to see some more um uh into the characters' backgrounds and not mm -hmm. just focusing on the uh the relationships. And I what's the, what's your take of uh Denise and Brian? Man, okay, so I just hashtag justice for Denise. Like everybody <laughs> who was slamming her in the comments and being like, why is she? I understand their relationship because I understand Denise, I understand Brian. And through conversations, um, Lance, who does play Brian, and Symphony, who plays Denise, they've broken down their characters to a T, where it's like, Denise is that strong Black woman in the sense that she can, she doesn't really need Brian. <laughs> Whereas Brian sees like the things that everyone else is like, wow, she's so selfish. She just doesn't care. Those are the things that he admires about her. Like that strength, that will to just get things done, like, you know, instantly. Brian looks at that, even though he does have his own business, he's an entrepreneur. He looks at that as like, oh, wow. So, okay, all right, maybe I need to, I need to send this email. Like, I need to get this done by my business. Like, I need to, like, it almost motivates him. And but, I think but, the relationship works. But do you think that admiring someone that's admiring someone because they're selfish is, is toxic in a way? Well, I don't think that he's admiring her selfishness. I think that he admires her strength and okay. her determination and her ability to just get things done, her hustle, essentially. Um, I think both of them are selfish, honestly, because whereas we see Denise, she's like ordering things for the wedding. She's always talking about the wedding. Da, 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 and it's like we're looking at her and we're kind of like, oh, wow, that's all you care about. Like, you, you want the wedding. You don't want the marriage. But it's like, Brian, what are you doing to 
be a part of this? Like, how are you showing her that you too care about the wedding? Like, do you only want the the relationship? If that's the point, then we're, what are we getting married for? You know, like, essentially, I think he could do a better job of giving her what she needs in that moment, which is maybe it's validation, maybe it's reassurance, maybe it is just that good time. But both of them have been selfish in my eyes. Interesting. <laughs> It's a very, it's a very interesting take. Um, and and I, I told you um, outside of the show that uh, I was frustrated with your character. Um, yeah. Your character and, and Raymond and sort of like, uh, I guess, beating around the bush, you know, just delaying the inevitable. Um, Ray, Raymond actually, you know what? I was actually, I was actually extra frustrated with Raymond because Raymond reminded me of me, like mm. freshman year of college, where like you know, you know, you like somebody. They're sending you choosing signals, you know. They're sending you, uh, they're letting you know that they like you, but both of y'all are just playing. Mm. So that was that was kind of like, what's your take? What's your take on the? Uh, the fact that you and uh, you and Raymond just didn't neither one of y'all knew how to close the deal, even even <laughs> even though you were feeling each other. I mean, honestly, look. So I can speak for my character. I think Story is just in a place where, like, she's gone through a very toxic relationship, and she's open to dating and open to being having an intimate relationship with a man, but she's closed off, rightfully so. Like, she's been hurt, and I don't think that she's going to be so open about her feelings towards Raymond just for him to potentially reject her. But she was, but she was closed off to everyone except the person who hurt her. She was closed off to. (laughs) Tell me about that. It's familiar. It it goes back to my situation. Like that's comfortable. I already know you're going to hurt me. So when you do, it doesn't hurt as much because I was already expecting it. Interesting. Is that is that really how um is that how women think? Is that how women process those type of relationships in real life? I think everyone does, honestly. Like whether it's a relationship intimately or even like a family member, it's like if I know you're gonna disappoint me and you do, it doesn't hurt as bad because I already expected you to do that anyway. So I'm not surprised. And the whole the whole um I guess root of our suffering is desire and desire can, can stem from expectation. So if I expect you to be this certain type of man, or I expect you to be there for me in a certain type of way, and then you're not, then wow, I'm, I'm suffering. I have pain. But if I don't even have that expectation and you hurt me or you cause me pain, then I kind of already planted it in my head that I would receive that. So. Okay. So, um, what's, uh, what's next for Camry Cole? Oh man, what's next? Okay. So I'm actually, aside from acting, I just wrote my first book and I'm publishing it this year. It's called Moments to Myself, Living in the Now. And it's a book that's about just living up to your divine potential and walking in that and just being true to yourself and learning yourself on a more a deeper level. So like a self-help, so, self-help book. I so don't want to call it that, but it is. It There's is. nothing wrong with that. It is. It is. I mean, 50 but cents, it, uh, the book 50 cent just put out hustle harder, hustles, uh, smarter, hustle harder. What that was, that was a self-help book. It was a very good book. There's oh, nothing wrong with those, but go ahead. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 it is self-help. But I do make a comment on the difference between self-help book and my book. Is there's a difference? I think. What's the difference? I think some self-help, <laughs> some self-help books, they can just be like a band-aid over things that actually need to be to. Whereas my book is more focused on the root of those problems and actually uh, healing those aspects of yourself that need to be changed. So I take it you're a very spiritual person. You would be correct. 
Okay, I, I get those vibes. <laughs> I get the I get the you know sage burning in the room. Oh my god, meditation vibes. Like that. So he's like, what is going on? Like, oh. And uh, what um, you know, one of the prem- premises of of my show is to give um independent, uh, not just artists and musicians, but creators, um, inspiration and guidance. So, what type of um, it, and I know you're still, you're still in the middle of your journey, but you're doing very well for yourself. What type of advice or guidance would you give to someone who aspires to be where you are? Um, there's so much advice, honestly. And to that point, I would say, listen to yourself, um, in the sense that follow your instincts. I am spiritual in the sense that I do meditate and I do I knew it. In time, <laughs> you do yoga to really, too. To get to get information <laughs> from the source, from the from the heart, from what's true. But honestly, that's helped me. That's that's helped me because I think you know you know yourself more than anyone does. And while we can look to certain people and try to follow their path, that's great. But I think that's also very earthy. And if you want to live in like. Um, up to where you are supposed to be, I think that, you know, you should dig deeper to get guidance and to seek guidance to help you, you know, know what room to be in and know when to be in the right place at the right time. I think that comes from, you know, supernatural, if you will. Your gut, your intuition. Got you, got you. So you, you said the book is published, right? I'm sorry? You said the book is published, right? It's coming out this year. Okay. How can people get the book when it comes out? Um, uh, they will be able to get it on a website that will be available shortly. Okay. And uh, how do people, uh, how can people uh, find you? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Camry Cole or Twitter, Camry Cole underscore or Facebook, Camry Cole. Dope. Well, thank you, Miss Cole, for joining the show. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I have a question for you, though, Travis. Uh, I want to know. Excuse me with the Travis. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I want to know what's your top three songs on this uh, bedroom soundtrack that you just got, that you just put out. Okay. So uh, the single is called Do It Again. Okay. The, vi- the video was out. It's on YouTube. It's on the videos on streaming services too. The the services that offer videos. But do it again is the number one song. Um, okay. I got a song called HQD. 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 Uh, what is this? Does that stand for something? It does. High quality D. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I never heard that before, but okay. HQD. And, uh, yeah, I kind, of, kind of made that up. Um, uh, and uh, a song called "Freak You Up," which is pretty good. It was so it was released on Valentine. Don't think I'm like some kind of pervert or something. It was released. Yeah, on, no, no, no. I, I it got was the released, <laughs> yeah, It was released on Valentine's Day. It's a it's definitely um, it's definitely uh, mood music. Yeah, yeah, I definitely <laughs> vibe out to it. You should listen to it when we finish the interview. Let me know what you think. <laughs> and uh, watch the video too. Video's uh-huh. dope. For sure. Now, any other any, any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Cole, for coming on the Trav Torch Show. We appreciate you. And uh until next time, peace. Yes. Bye.